Hello guys! In the last video of this series, two people asked to make an enemy that moves. Of course, this can be done in different ways. But here, I will extend the base enemy again, like we did at the other video creating enemies, so we will be able to reuse parts of the base enemy. So let's click at the enemy and select New Inherit Scene. Now we can save this scene as Enemy 3. And we can detach the current script because we want to create a new script extending the base one. Now we attach a new script. Let's save it at the scripts folder. And here at inherit we will select the enemy script. So our new enemy will be able to make everything the base enemy does. So now before we start to adjust this new enemy, let's adjust the main scene so that we can test the new enemy later. At the main scene, we can preload this new enemy as we have done before with all the other enemies. Then let's create a stage 3 and in this stage we will just have this enemy so we can test it. Let's check a good position to spawn this enemy at the scene. I think this P4 position will be a nice place to spawn. So let's make this new enemy spawn at the P4 position. This enemy will be of type 4, because the flying one was the number 3. Now, at the global script, we can set the current stage to 3, so that it will open directly at this stage. Let's go back to the main function and adjust the rasp enemy to respawn the new enemy if the type is 4. Ok, now we can go back to the new enemy script to create him. So we can start to find some variables. Is walking to right will be used to make the enemy walk to the right or to the left. The start pause is the enemy start position. And the walk distance is the distance the enemy will walk before he turn around. Let's create two simple functions to move the enemy in each direction. We can name them as walk right and walk left. For now, they will just increase the position of the enemy in each direction. You can change the speed if you want, but for now I will keep the speed at 5. Now let's create another function to manage the walk. So first we will test if the current position is bigger than the start position plus the walk distance. And if so, we set the is walking to right to false. And we make another test to check if the current position is smaller than the start position minus the walk distance. And if so, we set is walking to right to true. For sure this code can be optimized, but the main point here is keep it easy to understand. So let's make a new test, so that if is walking to right is true, we call the function walk right. And if is false, we call walk left. Let's create a new variable at the main enemy script to know if the enemy is shooting. We can use that to make the enemy stop the walk when he's shooting. So basically, if any of the raycasts is colliding, we set the is shooting to true. And if none of them is colliding, we set it to false. Now let's go back to the enemy script. Let's add the ready function. In this function, we will get the start position of the enemy. And we can create the physics process function to make the enemy walk. Now, before we go ahead, Let's just check what we have at the moment. And there we can see the enemy walking in both directions as expected. Of course we have still some adjusts to make. So let's go back to the enemy scene. First thing we will do is animate the enemy's walk. So let's create an animated sprite. We can make the normal sprite invisible, so we can still use the collision from the sprite. And we can create the animation for the animated sprite. So let's add the frames for the walking animation. Let's move the life bar a bit. Now we can make some adjusts at the code to make the animated sprite flip when needed. So basically when the enemy is walking to the right, we don't want to flip the sprite, 
because it is normally turned to the right. And when the enemy is walking to the left, we flip the sprite. And we can make another adjust here to make our enemy stop when he's shooting. So we make a test here so that the enemy will just walk if he's not shooting. And we add the same test to the left. So let's check what we have now. Ok, so we can see that the enemy already stops when he sees the player before he starts to shoot. But there are still some adjusts to make. First, let's add another animation to use when the enemy is not moving. We can call it idle. Let's add the sprites. Now we can make a test inside the walk function to check if the enemy is shooting. If he is, we can play the idle animation. And as the sprite of the main enemy is being flipped to the direction of the player, let's pass the same value to our animated sprite, so he will flip to the correct direction. And if he is not shooting and the current animation is idle, let's play the run animation. And here, at the walk right and walk left functions, we can flip the animation sprites too, to be sure that when the enemy walks, he is ever walking with the correct animation. Let's see what we have. And there is our enemy running and shooting correctly. Ok, but he's respawning the wrong type of enemy after we kill him. That's not exactly a problem, but we can easily fix that, so let's do it. So here at the enemy function, we can see that the type of the enemy to respawn is hard-coded. Let's change that so that the enemy that respawn is the same as the killed one. To do that, we can create a new variable. Let's call it enemy type. And then we inform the correct type to each enemy. So this is the one. And then we change the hard-coded one for this variable. Now let's make this adjust to the enemy tree. To change this variable we can use the init function. And here we can pass the type 4. So let's run our game again. And we can see that now the same enemy responds after we kill him. So, that's it for this video, I hope you enjoy it, if so please consider subscribe, comment, share, give a thumbs up and thank you for watching. Bye!